Sunday after Epiphany. It might be cold and snowy outside, but thank God it's warm inside the center. Let me also take this opportunity and extend a special welcome for those who are worshiping with us by the selected medium. Thank you for worshiping with us and thank you for letting us in your home this morning. Please stand for the call to worship. I pray that you have been rooted in love. The God with all the Lord's holy people. Come to know the love of Christ. A love that surpasses all understanding. So that we may be filled with the fullness of God. Help us all to know your love, Lord. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. We have a story to tell. <laughs> Thank you. 
eternal and gracious God. We thank you for your mercy and grace, which woke us up this morning and allow us to see another day. We thank you for being able to bring us peace even in these turbulent times. Help us to keep our eyes on you, fill our hearts with hope, peace, and joy. Father, we love you and give you praise. For you alone are worthy to be praised. We thank you, O oh God, for this day and for this special moment that we can come together, O oh God, to fellowship and to unite our hearts and voice to give you praise. May you continue to strengthen us for whatever lies ahead and keep us covered with the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord's prayer. Angela Davis. And Angela Davis is an activist, a scholar, and a writer who advocates for the oppressed. She has authored several books, including Women, Culture, and Politics. Angela Davis was born on January 26, 1944, in Birmingham, Alabama. Her family lived in the Dynamite Hill neighborhood, which was marked in the 1950s by the bombings of houses in an attempt to intimidate and drive out middle-class black people who had moved there. 
Davis occasionally spent time on her uncle's farm and with friends in New York City. Her siblings include two brothers, Ben and Reginald, and the sister, Fania. Ben played defensive back for the Cleveland Browns and Detroit Lions in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Davis attended Carrie A. Tuggle School, a segregated black elementary school, and later Parker Annette, a middle school branch of Parker High School in Birmingham. During this time, Davis's mother, Sally Bell Davis, was a national officer and the leading organizer of the Southern Negro Youth Congress, an organization influenced by the Communist Party aimed at building alliances among African Americans in the South. Davis grew up surrounded by communist organizers and thinkers who significantly influenced her intellectual development. Davis is best known as a radical African American educator and activist for civil rights and other social issues. She knew about social prejudice from her experiences with discrimination growing up in Alabama. As a teenager, Davis organized interracial study groups, which were broken up by the police. So we are going to stand and sing, lift every voice and sing. I know some of us will remember it, and if we don't... And sing. So it's still play with the same enthusiasm. That's the little. Uh, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty.
this time we'll have our music ministry by Brother Bill. Just 
morning is taken from Jeremiah chapter 17, reading from verse 5 through 10. That is Jeremiah 17, reading through 5 to 10. Thus says the Lord, Curse are those who trust in me mortals and make me flesh a friend, whose heart turns away from the Lord. They shall be like a shot in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the past places of the wilderness in an inhabited source land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, who trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when he comes, and its leaves shall stay green in the year of drought. It is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It's perverse who can understand it. The Lord tests the mind and search the heart to give all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. This is the word of God. May God have the greatest blessing for his holy scripture. Amen. Gospel lesson comes to us from Luke chapter 6. Stand if you are able, please. Reading verses 17 through 26 as I'm reading and hearing. He came down with them stood on a level place with the great crowd of his disciples and the great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were healed. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For surely your reward is greater in heaven, for that it is what ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. It is the word of God. done by Sister Pilgrim this morning.
take those words not just to heart but live always in the light and yes even the shadow of those words thank you again sister pilgrim for your witness good morning brothers and sisters grace and peace be to you from god our father and the lord jesus christ The title of the message is in the form of a question. In whom is your trust? In whom is your trust? And the text is Jeremiah chapter 17, primarily verses 5 to 8, 
but will cover 5 through 10. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. And I read a couple of these verses in your hearing as you prepare to receive this word. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when he comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Let us pray to God. Lord God, speak to us in the quietness of this time while we wait on you. Speak, Lord, by touch of tongue and by touch of life. And so let your word be spoken. Let your word, O oh God, be heard, and then let your words be lived. And so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In whom is your trust? Chances are, if we ask each person present, or in the hearing of my voice, in whom is your trust, we will say it's God. But do we have the evidence to prove it? Often enough we'll say that. But when the times become hard and tough, we tend to fall back upon ourselves. Often enough we might say, you really can't trust anybody but yourself. When the things you have that you have become dependent upon are taken or are gone, often enough we experience depression and broken spirit. We live out our lives in the shadows as if there is no hope. And yet, we claim that our trust is in God. Our text tends to read like we are reading the Psalms. And for those of us who grew up at a time when learning included reading the Bible and memorizing portions of Scripture, this particular text rings as if it is coming from Psalm 1. You know that one, right? Blessed is the man who walketh not. Okay. As you read that psalm and as you reflect upon it, it begins to feel as if we are in a different time. In our text, Jeremiah is setting up an important contrast. A contrast between those who place their trust in human beings or in human resources over against those who place their trust in God. The contrast is a life and death matter. And Jeremiah uses the imagery of the tree. Those who place their trust in human resources are like a dry shrub in the desert, he says. It bears no fruit. It has no permanent source of nourishment. It is alone. In fact, death is its experience. It's as if life is being lived without a future. 
And then the contrast that he strikes is really stark. He speaks of what is like the transplanted tree. The tree that might have been in the desert, it's now transplanted and put beside a stream. Its roots sink deep. It becomes fertile. It produces. It's unafraid of the elements. It is always fresh, even when it is hot and dry. The contrast is stark. It is as night and day, death and life. So what is the point Jeremiah was making? I suggest that his point is summarized in the title of this message, In Whom Do You Place Your Trust? In Human Resources or in God? For him, if you trust in human resources, you will experience the full onslaught of death. Because human resources are not permanent. They are here today and gone tomorrow. And you know human beings, we become preoccupied with our own stuff. And so when others come knocking, we become inward looking. We do not have the time to give them, nor are we willing to share the resources that we have. But if we place our trust in God, there are four things that will happen. Four things that I believe are critical to us in our time and in our day. If you place your trust in God, if God is your trust, according to Jeremiah, you will be blessed. Now you need to understand something here. Because to be blessed is not so much to be swamped with material stuff. To be blessed, the Hebrew word barak, that is translated blessed, means to share one's life, one's strength, one's power with another person. So to be blessed by God is to have God share God's life, God's strength, and God's power with you. If God is the one in whom you place your trust, then God will leverage all that God is in your favor. So what Jeremiah was saying is if you place your trust in God, God will be there for you anyway. And too often that becomes shifting for us. We trust God today and when the goings become rough, we turn inward and depend only upon ourselves. If you place your trust in God, you will be blessed. And God's blessing is not dependent upon the circumstances. So that's the first thing. If you place your trust in God, you will be blessed by God. But not only that, as you look at our text, you see that he also indicated that you will grow. Look at how he states this. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. You will grow. The life and circumstances that are a part of your experience will improve. You will increase. Your life will become more expansive and full and mature. 
you will become stronger. You will become more powerful. You will be nourished and nurtured on the life of God. Because God is for growth. God is for continuity. God is about increase rather than decrease. So when you place your trust in God, not only will you be blessed, but that blessing will manifest in your growth. But you look at the text and you realize as well, there is a third thing that comes to those who place their trust in God. And it will be that you will rest assured or rest secure. Notice how Jeremiah states it. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. You see, when you place your trust in God, you can rest secure. No matter how much the elements assault you, no matter the impact that they have on you externally, they cannot reach you where you really are. No need to become anxious or afraid. And you know, I want to pause here long enough to point out that there are times that some of us feel that if God is for us, then we cannot experience any storms. And when the storms come, we doubt whether or not God is with us, whether or not God has kept God's word. So illness strikes us and we are ready to give up. Circumstances change and we are ready to abandon ship. When our loved ones experience upheavals, we are ready to throw in the towel. You see, because we confuse what's going on on the outside with what should go on on the inside. You see, he didn't promise us a rose garden. In fact, he didn't promise us roses without prickles. However, our lives will not be, be determined by the prickles, but rather by the beauty of the flower. You see, God is a God who keeps us. And he will keep us regardless of what's going on on our outside. When the enemy attacks us, we can rest assured that God will take care of us. Because God will have our back. Isn't it true that it's stated in scripture that no weapon that is formed against you will succeed, will prosper? That is because God would have had you. God would have secured you. God would have protected you. When you place your trust in God, you can depend upon God being there for you when the goings become rough and tough. When the fortunes seem to be changing, God will remain constant with you. So yes, you will be blessed if you place your trust in God. You will grow if you place your trust in God. You can rest secure if you place your trust in God. But our text also says that you will be productive if you place your trust in God. Look at how Jeremiah states it. He says that in the year of drought, the tree is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. You see, you will be able to still stand even in the midst of life storms. You will be able to stand protected because God has your back. You'll be able to count upon the fact that God will share God's life, God's strength, and God's power with you. In other words, then, as Jeremiah was careful to point out, he didn't just simply say 
that blessed are those who trust in the Lord. He also said that blessed are those whose trust is the Lord. In other words, that it's not just simply where you place your anchor, but the anchor becomes God. And so for Jeremiah, what he was seeking to point out is that if you place your trust in God, God will become the very thing that you trust. You see, it is through your faith in God that life will continue and will be a life of hope. You know, Jeremiah it was who declared some ten chapters after this that those who know God will also know that he has a plan for them. A plan for good, not evil. A plan to give them a future that is full of hope. In other words, then, no matter what the prevailing circumstances are, God will make you productive because you depend upon God, and God is constant, and God is permanent, and human beings and human resources are not. So those who put their trust in God will have God become their trust. God will become their rock in a weary land. God will become a rock, a shelter from life storms. It is God who is reliable. It is God who is reliable in whom you ought to put your trust. Because if you do, God himself will become your exhibit. A, when people ask you why you believe in God, just look at how my life has gone since I placed my trust in God. I might have lost things, but I have not lost me because God has kept me intact. So then here is the life and death question. In whom do you place your trust? In whom do you place your trust? Or who is your trust? This, your answer to this question will determine whether you live or die. It will determine whether you survive or you go under. And my prayer is, my brothers and sisters, that God will indeed take care of each one of us. And that by God's grace we will be transplanted from the desert into God. And then we'll be blessed. Then we will grow. Then we will be secure. And then we will be productive. May God help us to know the blessing of trusting in Him. For without Him, nothing is possible nor are we anything of consequence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to God. Lord God, we come again and we place ourselves at your disposal. We have read your word. We have heard your word. And so now, O oh God, it's decision time. It is time for us to determine where our lives will be spent. In the desert or beside the streams of living water. You promised, O oh God, that if we plant ourselves in you, then we will be okay, regardless of the storm that will come our way. Teach us, O oh God, how to live beside the, the streams of life, streams that are placed there by you. Teach us, O oh God, not to become so preoccupied even with the stream, 
but rather with the one who creates streams in the desert. Lord, we place ourselves in your hands because we know that in our hands we are in your hands we are safe. That in your hands we have a future. That in your hands we do not need to be anxious. But we'll approach life with confidence. Hold us, O oh God, in the palm of your hands. Anchor us in the rock that you are and cause our lives to have meaning. Speak your life fresh, O oh God, into us so that where our bodies might be giving way because of illness or because of illness our minds and our emotions are in turmoil or our spirits are broken. Lord, we pray that you will become the mending that we seek so that nothing in life will face us because anchored in you, we are safe. This is our prayer, O oh God, and we ask you these things in the name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The same Jesus who promised never to leave us nor forsake us, but rather will be with us to the end of the age. Amen. Let me at this time draw your attention to a few opportunities for ministry. Well, let me start by wishing Brother Savage a blessed birthday when it comes. His birthday is supposed to be on the 17th. You know, with a name like Savage, you wonder. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave that one there. Um, are there others who might be celebrating birthdays who's Birthdays are not listed this week. No, I want to acknowledge Sister Rita Richards and notice that she's not here by herself. She's very present with her son. And so we want to welcome both of them with us this morning. And we trust that this worship service has been a means of blessing and inspiration to you. We know that you have been through some struggles, but it is God who has kept you and will keep you as life persists. I want to welcome Sister Pilgrim. She is a member of Butler, but here at Westchester, uh, we are open <laughs> to butlers and all. Okay, and we have, who do I have at the back? Another butler? Yes, that's what I'm going to tell you how to steal. You see, I don't steal, they come. <laughs> so if you follow the path of the other sheep, and you come, understand, we will turn you away, we will nurture you. Oh, we are happy. <laughs> we are happy to have you and trust that God will anchor you. We're not saying here at Westchester, but anchor you in his love and in his care. Want to draw your attention, lay servants, to the deadline that is coming up? Notice that? The deadline for registration for lay servant school is the 18th, Friday of this week. So all persons who need to be um, registered need to do that by then or you will be left behind. 
So bear that in mind, I'm seeing Sister Sandra as well in church. You know, only when she shifted, I realized it was she. Well, we welcome you. We know that um, there are opportunities uh, from time to time that you have and you will drop in and be with us. But even though I acknowledge the few, know that I welcome the all. So I want to welcome and thank all of us for coming out today, especially on a snowy morning. Um, you know, Sister B has the angle upon all of us. Um, Sister B has that step up on us. You know why? Because Sister B has covered more snowstorms than we have. And she's not only survived the snowstorm, she's, she shows us how. It shows us how, Brother Sonder, how to survive this new storm. So we thank you for your witness, Sister B. <laughs> okay. Um, know that tomorrow there will be a seniors meeting at 12. And the information is here. You need to call in. Um, the call in number is 609 746. 1136-609-746-1136 and the passcode is 961-974 961-974 followed by the pound sign so tomorrow seniors starting at 12 noon your meeting will commence also, I um, want to remind you of the upper room disciplines. We only have the large ones now. And there are not many. There are about four of them left. And they are $13. So bear that in mind, brothers and sisters. Also, we have Monday Night Bible Studies resuming. Started last week and we continue this week, Monday. And the Zoom, Zoom ID is 864-7317-7424. The Zoom ID is 864-7317-7424. And the passcode is 00. 8617 We encourage all of us to be studying the Bible, especially in these times when you'll hear all kinds of nonsense being passed as interpretation of Scripture. Those who want to call in, still with the same ID and passcode, the number to call in is 646-558-8656. 646-558-8656. We are doing the letter of Jude. Quite a book, a chapter, but an important book anyhow. So you are encouraged to join us on Monday evenings for Bible study. You notice as well in the bulletin there are health tips given, so follow those and stay healthy. And we encourage you as well to continue to pursue your daily Bible reading. Those that are listed for February, you know we're heading toward March. We you know as well that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Huh? And so I want to wish each one of us a most blessed Valentine. Um, you notice in the bulletin as well there are pictures of couples. And they're all smiling. Look at that. If they're smiling, what does that mean, Brother Saunders? <laughs> happy. <laughs> Is that they're happy? 
That means enjoying life. Huh? So I'm not hearing. Oh, they just smiling for the comment. Well, I'm not subscribing to that view. They're smiling because their hearts are happy. And so I wish each one who is smiling a most blessed Valentine's Day when it comes tomorrow. Um, am I forgetting anything that I need to remember? Or the COVID health kits? You see the information given in the bulletin for that. Please pursue that. Um, www.covidtest.gov and make your request known. Okay. Huh? I'm not hearing you either. They say lift every voice and sing. <laughs> if you're smiling, I wish you a blessed Valentine's Day. Whether you are a couple or single. Um, you can have a, a love day. That's what I think Valentine's Day means, right? I tell you. Anyways, so single people are not chop liver. <laughs> Contrary to what some might think. Okay. That said, I want to thank all those who had anything to do with this worship service. Want to thank Brother Cleveland for sanitizing the space. Want to also thank the ushers for ushering us into a safe space for worship. Want to thank those who are present and those who are on social media, Facebook or YouTube. And I want to thank those as well who are on conference call. No, they cannot be out, but they are worshipping with us anyhow. want to thank the trustees for securing this space as well. But I also want to thank those who provided Ministry of Music, Sister Pilgrim, Brother Gums, Brother Roland, Brother Savage. want to thank each one of you for your presentation, not only of a gift of music, but also of yourselves. In this process. I want to thank you as well, Clyde, for carrying the videoing and the uh, live streaming. Thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank our two lay ministers who are assisting with this worship service, Minister Benjamin and Minister Dawson. Trust that God will continue to use us for the advancement of God's kingdom. I want to thank also the acolyte, the one who lit the candles, and I know will take the light into the world. Right, Brother Maya? <laughs> okay. That said, I'm going to invite us to stand to receive the benediction, after which we will sing the closing hymn, Leave It There. Lift your heads to receive this benediction. Go forth, my brothers and sisters, into your world, placing your trust in God, knowing that God who is faithful is the God who will bless you, the God who will grow you, the God who will secure you, and yes, the God who will make you productive. And so may God the Father who loves and takes care of you, God the Son who redeems you by his life, death, and resurrection, God the Holy Spirit who continues to give life to you and to me, may God be with us today and every moment of our lives. Amen. Amen. So we sing, leave it there. <laughs>